covering the news talking baltimore bridge and p diddler raids and more get in now hassan abbey are you gonna do any upside down politics i mean i kind of do want to go to this like marxist convention apparently it's like a trot convention i think it would be memes to like but but i i do worry about like coming across like anti-communist you know what i mean like apparently there's a marxist convention and i'm sure there'll be like fans of mine there too for sure but it's like it seems a little culty and it's like a damned if you do damned if you don't situation because like i don't want to make too much fun of them like i don't want to make jokes uh in a lot of instances like inside jokes that you make turn into outside jokes and are like used in an anti-communist manner i guess so i don't i don't know i don't know how to like i don't know how to describe it like i want to it's kind of like this okay disco elysium disco elysium is popping the fuck off again on twitter for some weird reason and it's like all the right-wing freaks figured out that disco elysium is a fun game but they of course looked at disco elysium and now are saying it's objectively an anti-communist game and i'm like you're an idiot like it's made by communists and the jokes are in group jokes okay it's not supposed to be for you you dumb reactionary stupid european fascist you it's not for you okay i hate you you do not appreciate art you don't know anything you have no understanding of subtext you are a dumb baboon you do not deserve this game which is why sometimes i have a hard time making jokes about communists in general because i know some are gonna take it like seriously and take it to the next degree which is why i don't know if i can go to the trot convention and just make fun of them and make memes about that without it becoming like a thing where people are like well this guy's a reactionary you know <sighs> alexa you never played disco elysium did you oh you did okay it's it's so good it's so f good yeah it's just it's just very well written overall laptop sticker update opinions Stepan, the student communist, of course not. The people who actually call themselves liberals are mouth-forming reactionaries. Echo maker, basically indistinguishable from fascists. You'd need an x-ray machine to tell the difference. So this is like an actually correct take for the record. Like this is making fun of uh, the, the, uh, this type of person. However, however, the issue is people took this and i think like they quote retweeted it people quote retweeted this and were like oh you don't get it, it this actually is like like this guy is a five eye sticker bro that is fashioned in the form of five guys where do you even find that like where do you even find that he's a slava ukraini dude come come look at this sticker please i'm lo like look at this dude's laptop i'm losing my mind he's got the nato otan sticker he's got the neoliberal sticker he got the Slavo Ukraini sticker. He got the U.S. Department of Defense sticker, and then he has the Five Eyes one, Sigint and fries. Like, so it's, no, it's like Five, five guys, guys Burgers and Fries. Oh, five Eyes. <laughs> it is Five Eyes. Don't say that's cool. No, it's, uh, cool. <laughs> eyes, it's just like. It, how do you even arrive at these stickers, man? <laughs> Why? I think it's, it's lying to the person who did stickers. Definitely don't want to work. Okay. No, they don't. They That's want to. Crazy. They want to work. Okay. They want to work at these institutions. Is is Thank you. That's the lamest part about this. That's the lamest part about it is that these are like Disco Elysium satirizes an own ideology in a self aware, over the top uh, curvature of its stereotypes. Twitter. Man, they really hate communists, huh? Exactly. Those same characters disavow crop rotation as anti-communist and alienate any potential allies due to a purity spiral. This game is making fun of you. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. You can, we do not deserve, let me tell you something. We just don't deserve, we don't deserve art at all. We can't have it. Or maybe we just keep consuming it and then who gives a that these like don't get the point and literally are, are just like avoiding the point harder and don't understand it oh it makes me so mad it makes me so mad that these guys behave like this conservatives on high levels of cultural appropriation that person's notorious moron yeah that person is famously the same guy who thinks like i enslaved my mom because she makes me food at my house i will never forget that one what a what a perfect demonstration of how much of a sad life you lived and looking at a mom like living with their son and cooking them meals and going 
he's enslaving his mother. <clears throat> yeah, it's just tell me you have a bad relationship with your mom without telling me you have a bad relationship with your mom. You know what I mean? It's just fucking sucks. But I just, you know, overall, overall, I guess my point is um, these guys don't deserve it. Horseback Monument, the old king and his horse have been covered in posters with radical slogans like no kings, no bosses. And again, and once more after that. What? Oh, I got to play Disco Elysium on stream. The laptop stickers guy probably works or contracts with the DOD. The only Disco Elysium had the balls to ask hard hitting questions like what if you were in Quebec and gamers couldn't handle it? <laughs> it just sucks that it'll never be made again. A game like that will never be made again. A, that game will never be made again. The second game will not be that good. I don't have any hope for the fucking actual TV uh, version of it under Amazon Studios, which the inherent irony is also not lost on me, which, you know, that's fine. That is very Disco Elysium to have like a TV show under Amazon Studios. Yeah, well, there, I looked into it a lot because there was a point where I genuinely wanted to finance it. Like, no, like... I legitimately saw that like the the studio had been taken over by like VC like vultures predatory uh, uh, VC guys, and I was like, it's so beautiful, it's such a wonderful game, and I know that they're like actually made by commies, you know what I mean? Uh, that I, I I thought I could like help them out, and then I f no no that's the separate thing. That's that's the Amazon Studios thing. I was talking about like the studio, the video game studio, yeah to like ensure that a second one happens or whatever. There's a lot of drama on it, unfortunately. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of drama that, uh, there's a lot of drama that happened basically surrounding the, the game. And uh, I, don't, I don't think there will be a second one. But anyway, the army is using Helldivers for uh, promotions. Shit is beyond parody. Capital has the ability to assume all criti critiques into itself. Even those who critique, uh, even those who would critique capital, end up reinforcing it instead. I disagree to a certain degree with the last part about it. That those who critique capital end up being subsumed. I think that's like too cynical of an approach. <laughs> this is an unedited picture of the laptop you were looking at. <laughs> uh, you said. From what you know about the U.S. Green Party, you don't trust them. Please explain. Uh, no, I will not be explaining. The Green Party is great. Please go vote for them, okay? And in Australia and in America, too. Please stop. Are you going to talk about RFK today? He cucked this campaign. And I, I thought I dreamt this. I'm not kidding. I thought I literally dreamt this in my mind. I don't know why. I, don't, I think I was, like, maybe listening to, like, Majority Report half awake or something in the morning. And I, because it was, like, 4 a.m. at that point. And I, I can't remember if I, like, dreamt RFK announcing his fucking running mate and it having being shitty uh, and not, unfortunately not, uh, what's his face? My goat, Jesse Ventura. Everything is a part of the spectacle society, even everything that critiques it. Yeah. Um, if it was Jesse the body Ventura, I would have voted for RFK Jr. I'm not even kidding on that. I literally would have uh, I would have voted for him. Aaron Rodgers, I would not have voted for him. But if RFK Jr. brought Jesse the Body Ventura, okay, Chris Kyle's actual fucking uh, Merker, like Jesse the Body Ventura basically shot Chris Kyle post-mortem, okay? Think about that. American hero, American sniper Chris Kyle lies about beating up Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura launches a successful defamation case against the family. Okay. Chris Kyle gets killed by a, another veteran with PTSD that like he's going out to shoot guns with. Okay. And and guess what? Jesse Ventura does not drop the fucking court case at all. Sues the widow and is like, "That's your family estate." Sorry, sorry. That's your family estate. Your husband should not have lied about fighting Jesse the Body Ventura and defeating him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Turns out, when you lie like that, you're gonna get sued in the courts. And the courts will find Jesse the Body and the Mind Ventura to be the real winner.
Show the clip where he doubles down. Yeah, Jesse Body Jesse Body Ventura goes up against uh, a much worse Jesse, Jesse Waters. Um. Anyway, I think uh, what they mean is that basically that guy debord capitulation point like Chase shirts being sold by child labor and all society of the spectacle, like you said. Yeah. Okay. Um. Latest developments of the Disco Elysium studio drama. By the way, some good quotes in here about management. I don't want to know about anything. I, it just like makes me so sad thinking about it because it's such a beautiful game. You know, let's just let's just cherish the moments that we did have. RFK fans are not pleased. All right. Okay, we'll we'll cover all of that. Um, let's start with the playlist. Uh, obviously, flying to Australia to meet the Australian wildlife with Boy Boy and I did a thing that's up already uh, on on my second channel, on my secret channel. Go subscribe to the secret channel as well. Um, we are going to talk about the Baltimore Bridge collapse right now, of course. Uh, yesterday, midday for us in Australia, uh, while we were shooting the podcast, we got fucking breaking news. And the breaking news was that uh, a bridge in Baltimore had collapsed out of nowhere and immediately i personally thought oh this must be because our infrastructure is dog shit right turns out no it literally is one of those cases where it's a freak accident sometimes it happens you know what i mean sometimes it happens the only aspect of it that is like not so freakish or legitimately a much larger problem is the type of bridge that it is the type of bridge that it is makes it so that uh you know when it when one part of it collapses when a support beam collapses it takes out the entire fucking bridge which makes the which makes it much more damaging. It is seemingly, it is seemingly one of those situations that like literally is a freak accident. <laughs> if that makes sense. Cause like, obviously when I look at that, I think, when I look at that, I think, oh my God, it, like our infrastructure is so bad. Our infrastructure is so fucking bad. It, it got destroyed so easily. That's not even the case. Streamer monopolizing on news since Hasanabi is on vacation? Not. What? That's actually. What? Uh, oh, nah, I'm. Nah, nah, nah. Say you swear to God, a bridge nah, my life. That's nah, a new fear. My life, that's a new fear. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> hey, bro. To anyone that was uh, impacted by this, my condolences go out to your families and all that, bro. I'm. I'm. Genuinely, this is horrible, bro. This is actually one of the worst things I've ever seen. Oh, God. I don't know how many people passed away from that, but like, bro, that is. That's crazy. On God, bro. On God. That bridge, on God. Like London. You know what I'm saying? London Bridge is falling down. On God for real, dude. That's crazy. On my life, I've never seen no bridge go like go down like that. If I was there, it would not have gone down like that. I would have saved it. Um. <laughs> anyway, listen. Um. So. Yes, there is a infrastructural, uh, there is an infrastructural uh, uh, take there, right? Like the type of bridge that they're using, the type of bridge that they make is is uh, unfortunately, uh, it, once one support beam goes out in this type of bridge, the entire bridge goes down, as opposed to the concrete bridges where like it's much harder to take down, right? There could have been accident mitigating infrastructure like bollards or columns to prevent the br uh, bridge collapsing. That's true. There are many different things that they could have done. Luckily, it happened at like late at night, and luckily, it didn't happen at rush hour because that would have killed so many more people. Um, but ultimately, I think like people immediately thought maybe it's an act of terror, and then people were like, maybe it's not an act of terror, but like maybe it's actually because there's a black pilot or something, uh, you know, a black captain or DEI. And now conservatives are going off of the DEI angle. They're talking about how Baltimore's mayor is black. It's like, bro, have you seen Baltimore? The fuck? Like they're talking about it like as though it's just because Baltimore is like a, like a predominantly black area that like, you know, the bridge was shit. And I don't know what to say about this issue beyond the fact that like, <sighs> beyond the fact that <laughs> I told you that they just basically substituted, they just basically fucking substituted the, the, uh, you know, the N word with woke. And then they substituted with, uh, CRT 
and now they're substituting it with DEI. They just keep like swapping it. And it's just like, just say the N word, dog. Like, I, I get it. Like, I know what you're trying to say. Conservatives have gotten fucking lazy. One, they've gotten woke and they've gotten too PC because they just don't want to say the N word, right? And secondly, secondly, they've gotten lazy because like DEI, CRT, all of that stuff is not just a substitute for the N word. It's a substitute for like the N word variants of like whatever the race might be. It's like a pick and choose for non-white. Okay. Non-white, non-male. So like they got so goddamn lazy that now they don't even like find the adequate, like they don't even do the research to be like, what kind of non-white person am I shitting on? You know what I mean? They just say CRT. They just say DEI. They found like a universal placeholder that's politically fucking correct. One, because they got woke, because they're also they're also gay and Marxist now. That's what happened to the conservatives. And secondly, and secondly, they are lazy as fuck. Back in my day, racists would at least do their due diligence and find the appropriate slur to say to people. Nowadays, they don't even try. They just say woke. Where are the old school racists at? Dusting off the fucking racism tomes, okay? Going in and like doing the reading to find out exactly what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of bigotry we got to do. Yeah, this guy's a straight up Nazi, by the way. This account is like literally a Nazi. This is Baltimore's DEI mayor. Bro, DEI mayor in Baltimore? It's literally DEI if a white guy is in charge in Baltimore. You understand that, right? Like it would literally be like a diversity initiative to put a white guy in charge of Baltimore. What the fuck are you saying? DEI, like... They didn't put him there. They voted for him. Bro thinks they, they, they have a corporate structure in Baltimore and they put this guy in charge because he's black. I just know one of the first conservative insane person posts we'll see in the morning about the bridge collapse incident will somehow be related to wokeness or DEI or insane bigotry. It's not even basically, it's, uh, if it's uh, basically a matter of time, but our economy needs more foreign workers. Boom. Dude, what is happening? Like, do they think the bridge was built, like, by, by foreign workers last year or something? Like, DEI is a relatively new phenomenon. What the fuck are we talking about? It just doesn't even make sense. That's what's fucking frustrating about this situation is, like, like, obviously it's racist, but I'm so used to that, right? So, like, I expect it, and that's, like, it's shitty, it's lame, but, like... You're talking about a bridge that was built by your fucking Italian dad, okay? Yeah, they were the foreign workers at the time, dumb fuck, but they're not the people that you now consider foreign workers, you know what I mean? Unless you are a racist who, like, has gotten in a fucking time machine and went back in time and you're like, we got to cut out this Italian uh, immigration coming into the country. Like, unless that's your argument for DEI, like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the bridge is a huge part of the community here. Everyone's life is affected by this bridge. Also, the workers weren't warned, which is wild. I, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it's so fucking stupid. But, not only is it fucking stupid, but it also, and I've explained this over and over again, and I see this more so on Twitter than anywhere else, in a world, in a world full of blind people, if you can actually have vision, that's a L for you. Okay? And Twitter is a world full of blind people. Every single one of these motherfuckers are dumb as hell. They're all stupid and they're all fucking racist. So for them, they're like, they're just in their hug box going, dude, we are so right. We are so right about our, this issue here. We're so right about this. Yeah, it is actually like, I'm sure the, the ship captain was black. I'm sure the, the people on the ship were like non-white. You know, I'm sure that that's why the power went out. I'm sure that the ship company is doing uh, hiring, diverse hiring practices. I'm sure the bridge was built by foreign workers. And it didn't touch American hands. Let me tell you something. 
back when we had manufacturing in the United States of America, okay, and I remember the memes from back then, everybody used to talk about how dog shit American manufacturing is. Fuck you mean foreign workers. Like, everyone used it. It was a, it was a meta that, like, they would always joke that, like, people at the factories uh, I, must not have worn helmets or whatever the fuck. You know? Ford. Uh, what is it? What's the, what's the Ford one? Fuck. What's the meme about Ford? It, it used to... What, what, what does it stand for? Found on the road dead. And thank you. Exactly. Ford. Found on the road dead. Every, like... Obviously, that's improved dramatically over the course of the years, which is ironic because, like, that's also... Yeah, Ford. Fix or repair daily. Like, ironically, <laughs> as America has become more diverse... And this is a correlation, not causation. But, like, ironically, as America has become, I guess, more and more diverse, quote-unquote diverse... Our car manufacturing has improved dramatically, which is pretty funny to think about. <laughs> because, like, back when we did do a lot of manufacturing in this country and there wasn't a lot of DEI or whatever the fuck, like, people knew how shit it was uh, all the time. But it's hilarious to think about because, like, even on the correlation front, it actually... Even on the correlation front, it actually doesn't make sense. Obviously, correlation is not causation, but, like, you don't even have a correlation here. Like, more diversity has, uh, in more modern times, more diversity is like, literally led to, like, or not led to, but more diversity is side-by-side side with, like, better manufacturing capabilities. So, it is very fucking stupid. Oh, shit. How are you going to, how are you going to get through this, dude? Yeah, the bridge opened in 1977, and the acting governor at the time was a white guy. So I suppose you could say it's DEI. The government needs to hire less white people. I mean, it is DEI for Baltimore. If you got a white if you got a white boy in charge in Baltimore, that's DEI. That means like they did a diversity initiative. Okay, it's more DEI in that direction. It's the same as like like Irvine. You know what I mean? You go to Irvine, white. If you got a white guy in charge in Irvine, that's DEI, dog. What the fuck are you doing? You know. How did you get to this position, huh? Tell me. Oh, yeah? Diversity application, right? That's what it is. Like, what are we talking about? Dude, that's not true. DEI is the new acronym they love saying but can't tell you what it stands for. It's CRT 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, white guy in Atlanta, DEI. <laughs> anyway. Um... Crazy people are trying to act like this kind of incidence is a new in diversity. Cold? This is one of the many examples. The Silver Bridge disaster of 1967, a brief history of documentary. This is in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, United States. Uh, it, it was opened in 1928, but designed for the lighter vehicles on the time. I mean, this one is like, this one's a little bit different. IRL, IRL VDM Survivor. What the fuck? 50 tier one gifted subs. What the hell is this? What is VDM? Vehicular death match? What are people saying? The Mothman cometh? RP frogs? Mothman warned us about this bridge? Huh. Anyway, Mothman came to warn of the bridge collapse? I don't know what the fuck y'all are talking about. I don't know what y'all are on. Anyway, listen, listen. This person thinks the bridge was blown up on purpose? Dude, I like, love how fucking insane we've gotten. We've just gotten progressively more and more insane as the years go by, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Here, let's let Biden talk about how he's going to fucking rebuild the bridge, okay? Before we get to the more insane stuff. I forgot that, like, there's, all, there's also, like, the normal news side of this. So if many of you are unfamiliar with what the fuck's going on here, um, let's first start here. This is a better starting point. Let's talk about... Let's talk about uh, Brandon and and uh, what he had to say, and they'll give you uh, they'll give you some updates. Yeah, Americans have gotten so fucking insane. It is the most predictable outcome of like living the way that we do for as long as we have. We've become an increasingly more violent culture. We uh, have no solutions for any of the answers, so people are like desperate to find like good narratives. You know what I mean? So immediately people hit the terrorism note. People hit the fucking like, oh, it must be like gay black people building the bridge, uh, like a different form of bigotry. And um, 
But before we get to that, I should probably cover it, uh, you know, the normal aspect of it, like what actually happened, what the administration is saying they want to do. Okay, here. Before I leave for North Carolina, which I'm going to do in a few minutes, I want to speak briefly about the terrible incident and accident that happened in Baltimore this morning. At about 1.30, container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge, which I've been over many, many times commuting from the state of Delaware, either on a train or by car. I've been in Baltimore Harbor many times. And uh, the bridge collapsed, sending several people and vehicles into the water, into the river. And uh, multiple U.S. Coast Guard units, which are stationed very nearby, thank God, were immediately deployed along with local emergency personnel. And the Coast Guard is leading the response to the port, where representatives from the Federal Highway Administration, the FBI, the Department of Transportation, the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as Maryland officials in Baltimore Police and Fire are all working together to coordinate an emergency response. Officials at the scene estimate eight people were unaccounted for still, not still, were unaccounted for. That number might change. Two have been rescued, one without injury, one in critical condition. And the search and rescue operation is continuing for all those remaining as we speak. I spoke with Governor Moore this morning, as well as the mayor of Baltimore, the county executive, United, to both United States senators and the congressman. And my secretary of transportation is on the scene. I told them we're going to send all the federal resources they need as we respond to this emergency. And I mean all the federal resources. And we're going to rebuild that port together. Everything so far indicates that this was a terrible accident. At this time, we have no other indication, no other reason to believe there's any intentional act here. Personnel on board the ship were able to alert the Maryland Department of Transportation that they had lost control of their vessel, as you all know and reported. As a result, local authorities were able to close the bridge to traffic before the bridge was struck, which undoubtedly saved lives. Our prayers are with everyone involved in this terrible accident and all the families, especially those waiting for the news of their loved one right now. I know every minute in that circumstance feels like a lifetime. You just don't know. It's just terrible. We're incredibly grateful for the brave rescuers who immediately rushed to the scene and to the people of Baltimore who want to say, we're with you. We're going to stay with you as long as it takes. And like the governor said, you're Maryland tough, you're Baltimore strong, and we're going to get through this together. And I promise we're not leaving. Here's what's happening now. The search and rescue operation is our top priority. Ship traffic in the Port of Baltimore has been suspended until further notice. And we'll need to clear that channel before the sh ship traffic can resume. The Army Corps of Engineers is on the spot and is going to help lead this effort to clear the channel. The Port of Baltimore is one of the nation's largest shipping hubs. And I've been there a number of times as a senator and as a vice president. It handles a record amount of cargo last year. It's also the top port in America for both imports and exports of automobiles and light trucks. Around 850,000 vehicles go through that port every single year. And we're going to get it up and running again as soon as possible. 15,000 jobs depend on that port. And we're going to do everything we can to protect those jobs and help those workers. The bridge is also critical to, for travel, not just for Baltimore, but for the Northeast Corridor. Over 30,000 vehicles cross the Francis Scott Key Bridge on a daily basis. <clears throat> it's virtually, uh, well, it's a, well, it's one of the most important elements for the economy in the Northeast and the quality of life. My transportation secretary is there now. As I told Governor Moore, I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. And we're going to work hand in hand with the support of Maryland to support Maryland and whatever they ask for. And we're going to work with our partners in Congress to make sure the state gets the support it needs. It's my intention that the federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. You know, we're not leaving until this job gets done. Not leaving until then. So I just want to say God bless everybody who uh, got everyone harmed this morning and their families. Your mother did? What the fuck? That's so funny. Uh, David Simon's going off all on these motherfuckers. I keep getting Australian sun safety ads, so be careful, please. Don't forget to slip, slop, and slap. 
Um, how does Pete excel so much on being the worst transportation secretary? I think honestly, God is punishing him. <laughs> and no, I'm not even making like a like a ironic homophobic joke or something. Like I just I think he's just done a lot of bad in his life. <laughs> he killed too many fucking dogs at the shelter. Okay. And now and now he's getting punished for it. Okay. Because honestly, it is pretty wild how many transportation related disasters have happened under one fucking transportation secretary. It's just like it's got to be karma. Like it is pretty crazy. You know what I mean? Like it is a unique amount of there are a unique amount of transportation related incidents in this stolen joke from Chapo. Please tell me that is not what he's fucking they they made this joke already. I haven't watched a new Chapo. Did they talk about the Baltimore Bridge? I couldn't tell you the last transportation sector or any of the previous ones. I just like, I, no, but they talked about Boeing. Oh, they did? Um, anyway, listen, I, I'm in fucking Australia. I haven't uh, had time to listen to them. But the point is this. The point is this, okay? Any type of transportation that's going on in America is fucked under Pete Buttigieg's watch. It is really fucking crazy. What the hell was that in the window behind you? Um, it's uh, most likely uh, uh, Alex passing by that you saw the shadow of. No, they, they can't see you from the window. I'm looking at it right here. No, they can't see you at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Fucking spiders. It's a spider. It's a spider, mate. Um... Oh, yes, we can, they're saying. Maybe they can see you. I can't tell. Anyway, regardless, uh, as I was saying, there was a tarantula-looking ass on the wall earlier when you stood up. It went into the plant now. Okay, stop, dude. It's not even funny. Oh, what the fuck are you guys doing? Bro, chill. Fucking chill, dude. Are you going anywhere today? Yeah, I'm actually going to a, a different city today. I'm going to Melbourne uh, in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to Melbourne in a little bit. Uh, obviously, I'm going to fly out to Melbourne, so uh, I don't have time to do an IRL stream, right? Why are you saying congratulations, bro? It's not like an accomplishment. I'm just going to fucking Melbourne. Um, what time is it there? Uh, it is 2.40 p.m. in Los Angeles. It is 8.39 or 8.40 uh, a.m. here in, the, uh, in Sydney. In Sydney. Since you're in Australia... Would you be down to cover slash talk about some Australian news? No. <laughs> if you see my sister's ex in Melbourne, tell him he sucks. Okay, let's get back to the news. And may God bless the first responders, many of whom uh -oh. risking their lives. And uh, oh, I got scared. I'm gonna, the reason I'm not going to take a lot of questions. Just don't touch the black the one. Issues that are open. That we got to determine what's going to happen in terms of the rescue mission and the like, but I'll... Do you, do you plan to go to Baltimore, sir? And if so, how quickly? I do, and as quickly as I can. That's what we're you said the federal government's also going to pay for the repairs. I'm just curious. This was a ship that appears to be at fault. Is there any reason to believe that the company behind the ship should be held responsible? And then also, you that mentioned... That could be, but we're not going to wait for that happen. We're going to pay for it to get the bridge rebuilt and open. What did you make did of you Israel's have... decision? It's just crazy because, like, so consistently, there's one thorough line through all of these issues in all of these, like, transportation-related issues, right? And it's not Pete Buttigieg. It is the fact that, like, every single one of these companies is constantly cutting corners, cutting costs, constantly profit-seeking, constantly short-term profit-seeking in the sense that they, they literally do not care. Deregulation comes as well because they lobby the government for said deregulation. And then, like, they don't have the same, they don't have enough security measures on the infrastructure side, on the government side. Then they also implement deregulation. And then, like, you have boats that fucking run out of power. And it's crazy that, like, you see this in every company. It's not like black people running the ship, it's not brown people running the ship. It's that, okay? Capitalism is running the motherfucking ship. And it's making all of these. All of these things worse and worse year over year over year. And yet these dumb fucks can't recognize that. So they have to look and point the finger at their pet project, which is unfortunately for many, just racism, pure, unadulterated, unfiltered racism. That and a lack of safety redundancies. Yep. 
Turns out if it did have dolphin, dolphins, uh, they were just very uh, small and very far away from the piers. Effective. Yeah, save money, save lives. Install dolphins around your bridge piers. Now, the thing is, it can still be an issue. Freak accidents can still happen, okay? Sometimes, and this is the unfortunate reality, sometimes even if you have fucking dolphins, even if you have the redundancies, it's not going to be a 100%, uh, it's not going to be 100% safe. Like, maybe a ship is coming at it way faster than you were supposed to. It's just like a perfect, it's a, it's a perfect shitstorm where you basically have, uh, uh, you know, you might have like uh, conditions that you might have like a rift and conditions that make it so that the ship is actually going faster than, uh, than it normally would. And it runs out of energy or whatever the fuck, right? It runs out of power. And then it goes through the dolphin and still hits the fucking uh, bridge. I'm a civil engineer. The bridge was designed based on 1977 standards and ships have gotten bigger since then. This ship was 100 and, what, 117,000 tons. Wait, what? Bridges then and now take impacts into consideration using fenders and around the piers, but nobody's going to agree to pay for the cost of reinforcement against the size of the ship. Yeah. Point is, point is, point is, uh, no matter what happens, like, obviously you can still build the redundancies and they can still not be able to save you. In this circumstance, obviously, there were more safety measures that we could have had that we didn't. Okay. We did not have the safety measures on the infrastructure side. We also have increasingly, as a consequence of trying to fucking make higher profits, we constantly fucking front load all these goddamn ships. The, the, the logistics have gotten out of control. Okay? The logistics have gotten out of control. So these are all factors that contribute to these issues. Okay, is that a window? Why is it still dark if it's 8 a.m.? It's a dark window. Why are you asking me this question? <laughs> what? It wasn't an accident. It was orchestrated as yet another distraction in a series of distractions on the testimony of Major David Grush. This was a planned demolition. What are you saying, dude? Yeah, dude, they planned to fucking blow up a, a key part of the infrastructure that connects like two fucking uh, parts of, the, uh, of this city. Yeah, they did that on purpose. The worst part of this all, besides the human loss, of course, is going to be jobs, econ uh, economic losses on the people who rely on the port. The bridges used to transport hazmat in and out of the area. Now they must use tunnels for, uh, for hazmat, which is not ideal. Uh, every aspect, here's the thing, okay? Every aspect of our lives is touched by capitalism. Every aspect of our lives is impacted by decision makers that cut corners, deregulate, and and make overall, uh, like make the process of of your product coming from point A to fucking point B to your door less safe for everyone involved because they're trying to make it as efficient as possible and they're trying to ensure profits uh, are, are as high as possible. So that's it. So every single problem you can point to, and even uh, you can point to, uh, uh, you can point to the system for every single problem. However, beyond that, shit does happen sometimes. So I do think that this is like one of those instances, right? Like, obviously, um, we like looking at like what could have happened if we had like proper safety measures yada 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 and that's important because those safety measures exist for this fucking reason right but ultimately it, it sometimes it is a a freak accident you know what i mean i managed to find the single most insane take on the situation by the way are you kidding me it wasn't the david grush take the guy that thought that this was an orchestrated attack because of some fucking quack uh, crackhead uh, UFO conspiracy guy that's like giving testimony on aliens. Yeah, I think I think that's not the reason. <laughs> not even efficient at like getting it to you. Efficient for making money off of. It's anti-efficacious. It's complicated for no reason. Yeah, I'm, when I talk about efficiency, I'm talking about like uh, efficiency from the framework of a capitalist. 
Reasons why the bridge collapsed. Okay. Reasons why the bridge collapsed. Stone Toss, the Nazi says, foreign workers. Bridge was built in 1977. I don't think that he knows who he is talking about when he says foreign workers. Ironic, because this is, of course, a Puerto Rican Latino Nazi by the name of Hans Graber making this take. He would probably be considered a foreign worker by the metrics of his own kin, you know, his own ideological uh, uh, kinfolk, not skinfolk, I guess. Um, so that's cool. Uh, this guy says Chinese contractorship. It's fucking, we're talking about global shipping. Like, do you know what you are talking about? Point the finger of blame at China for everything then, because guess what? It's, first of all, it's not even Chinese. I'm pretty sure this one is Singaporean. But here, make no mistake. He's racist, but sometimes he could have actually technically called it right. Because we're talking about global shipping. Of course, hella fucking global shipping is like, is, is just completely controlled by, by uh, Chinese companies. Okay. I do like that. I do like that we are now making the whole like um, we're basically now doing the meme that I uh, that I uh, breath life in breathed breathed the meme of what kind of Chinese are you is now a reality. Okay, this is like very real. Senator, the ship was Singaporean. Yeah, yeah, it's Singaporean. It's a different kind of Chinese is basically now what is happening. Okay. I'm not giving this guy any like uh, props here. I don't think he, uh, you know, I don't think he like thought about it too much. He just immediately was like, it must be Chinese. This is the same argument for that lady who complained about the airport being filled with immigrants. Yeah, exactly. Um, Baltimore Bridge is 1.6 miles long. This is the moment it collapsed after a cargo ship struck it early in the hours of this morning. Lockdown. Yeah, critical infrastructure and... I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. You know, you know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the and the COVID issues. You know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure, and I, I'm one of these people that believes we. The bridge had a vaccine injury. Like, what's what's happening? John Guandolo says, my initial assessment of the bridge collapse due to the main support column being struck by a ship in Baltimore is that it is more likely than not intentional. I worked several Al-Qaeda Hamas cases while in the FBI and since and found verified by state intel agencies Al-Qaeda and Hamas targeted key bridges to shut down exfil abilities so they could conduct significant level follow-on attacks. <laughs> this may be that, or this may be an accident. I lean strongly towards not an accident. The, the fact that FBI slash Department of Homeland Security says it is not terrorism is a key indicator that it is. Uh, FBI slash Department of Homeland Security have been wrong 100% of the time. They initially say it's not terrorism. Fort Hood, Orlando, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Lakewood, Texas. This guy, wait, did this guy work for the FBI for real? Isn't it weird that it happened after the Moscow attack? No. Because the Moscow attack is an act of terror. Like a deliberate act of terrorism. This is not what the fuck are we talking about? Like, guys, sometimes things do happen and it's not immediately like a part of a grand scheme unless the grand narrative that we're talking about is literally capitalism and its inclination towards deregulation and, and constant profit-seeking initiatives that basically make it less safe for transportation, for logistics and and... Uh, make the make our, our key infrastructures also uh, less safe as well. Not ready for the the uh, how how large how big our cargo ships are nowadays. You know what I mean? 
as far as like grand narratives uh the goes like sometimes a fucking you know sometimes shit happens sometimes a car accident occurs you can look at it seriously you can look at it and analyze it from the framework of like well maybe it's uh maybe we should have uh less car reliant infrastructure maybe we should have better uh restrictions uh on on uh, maybe we should try and ensure that there are less fatal incidents occurring on the road, right? But we're not doing that because, uh, you know, we're, we're too busy making profits or whatever. Um, but people look at that, people look at something as like normal as like a car accident nowadays and go, oh, it must be that the driver was like black. You know what I mean? This course is driven by the most mentally ill. It is not driven by ideology. No, no, this is ideology. This kind of mental illness is a manifestation of uh, ideology, for sure. This kind of mental illness only happens with ideology. Part of this is anti-materialist thinking. Part of this comes from not being able to accurately look at the situation and recognize the structures that we exist under and why things are happening in the way that they're happening. This is a very predictable outcome. If you are like not directly this, uh, you know, Baltimore bridge is going to fucking blow up or whatever, but it's a relatively predictable outcome that our infrastructure is pretty bad. It doesn't have the adequate safety measures in place. And like, you know, things like this are probably going to happen. You're probably going to see, and this is not a, it, it's not going to be an act of terror, but you're probably going to see more bridges collapsing in the United States of America in the next five to 10 years. Is it because I'm somehow like Confucius or not Confucius, sorry, uh, is it because I can see the future? Do, am I clairvoyant? No, I'm not clairvoyant. I just know that we have a lot of F-graded eroding infrastructure that a shit ton of very heavy, increasingly more heavy fucking trucks are passing over. And now I was saying confused, but I, was, I meant Nostradamus. So, like, that's it. That's it. It's not Hassan Al-Ghaib. It's just... Our infrastructure is crumbling. We know that it's bad. We are basically resting on the laurels of the New Deal. Uh, and, and it's all shit that we built in like the 1930s, right? And we barely have upgraded this stuff. There are ratings uh, on this stuff. Like there, there's a way to like go through and look at the safety measures and see if it's adequate. And America consistently is considered inadequate. And getting worse and worse. So it is not that crazy of a stretch or that wild of a take to suspect that, like, we will see more bridge collapses in the future. This is the maritime version of that bridge collapse, right? Not having enough safety boundaries in place uh, to withstand larger impact from bigger cargo ships consistently uh consistently filling our cargo ships up to the fucking brim the the uh, logistics companies not listening to safety concerns that are coming from within refusing to reckon with that because that's unfortunately too costly and ultimately you arrive at this powder keg this perfect uh this, this perfect chaotic situation but why do we have such conspiratorial thinking i said it's ideology right it's because people don't want to think about that grand design. That's complicated. That's not like fun. It's not easy to understand. It's much easier to be like, oh, Jews did this. It's much easier to be like, oh, Hamas did this. Uh, they must have done this, right? Because it's, it's, way, it's way simpler to think in black and white terms and think that there are just like purely evil people that want to do evil. They want to do bad things. And they want to do bad things to us because we're good and they're jealous of our goodness. And that is basically at the heart of liberalism, which everyone is. Many, Almost every single person you know in this liberal monoculture is to some degree shaped by liberalism and their understanding of the world. And liberalism demands black and white thinking, good and bad, right? People, some people are good, some people are bad. Uh, it, it is not like a, a completely uh, a, a product of their social conditioning, but instead because they're just like inherently good or inherently evil. So then that is how you arrive at this like fascist ideological conspiratorial thinking because you're like, 
Well, who's the most evil right now? Hamas, duh. Or who's the most evil right now? Jews. So then they come up with these grand narratives. Who's the most evil right now? China, by way of the Singaporean Chinese. And that is why these guys uh, arrive at these fucking insane conclusions. And I mean, it's fun to watch. It's hilarious, right? It's a, it's a choose your own adventure. But it is kind of scary that American politics is a collection of the most unimaginably mentally ill takes now. Like, very, very little reasonable discourse occurs. It's almost always just like, nah, it's got to be some other, uh, you know, it's got to be some crazy conspiracy. Here's a site tracking how shit U.S. bridges are. Over 45,000 are considered structurally deficient. One in three U.S. bridges needs a repair or replacement. That's nice, man. In the state rankings, in a percentage of structurally deficient bridges, West Virginia is the number one state. Iowa, number two. South Dakota, number three. Rhode Island, number four. Maine, number five. Pennsylvania, number six. Puerto Rico, number seven. Now, this, this issue that we're talking about right here is the same problem, but, you know, a different variant of the same problem. It comes from the same place. It's a different variant of it, though, because you're going to be like, oh, Hassan, what do you mean? These are like, uh, these bridges are in a state of disrepair. The Baltimore Bridge was fine. Uh, the Baltimore Bridge wasn't in a, in, a, in a bad condition or in a state of disrepair. And it's like, no, the Baltimore Bridge did not have adequate safety measures placed for uh, the, the consistent ships that were going through it. That much is obvious. Right? John Guandola worked for the FBI, but you will never guess who we work for. I'm not clicking on any of your links, dude. Especially not at the top of the hour because I know, I know it's going to be bait. Okay? There's 0% chance there's anything but a top of the hour ad break. Yep. There you go. I called it. You ain't slick. Okay? You ain't slick, chatters. You're not slick. I'm the one who knocks. I'm the one who serves you the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour, and I'm the one who tells you if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. I cannot believe you were ready before me. But I know. I know, but it's, like, crazy to me that you, you got ready before me. I feel, I feel indecent almost. We, we, what time do we have to leave? Yeah. Okay. Ah. Uh, Shouldn't it be bottom of the hour, Dan and Ozzy? You're right. The new Iran crowds are so horny today. Please watch this. It basically predicted the entire right-wing narrative before it even happened. Hold on. We'll get to that. Let's finish the right-wing narrative, and then we'll watch that video. I have it ready to go on the docket, baby. Don't you worry about a thing. I want to cover this shit, and I'm going to cover the PDD stuff before I have to leave uh, to fly out, mate. Flying over the fucking outback, mate. Whoa. Please work on that accent. I think my accent's getting better. I thought it was stupid to blame poor infrastructure until I saw this tweet. No, of course, it's always a consequence of infrastructure. Notice how the key bridge had no fenders. This is why fenders are so important. The only type of protection in this case was the foundation itself, which was not big enough to alter the course of the ship given its concave shape of the hull. Poor design. It's not even poor design. It's more so... It's, it's fine design for when it was built. I'm sure there were better versions of it. But, like, it's fine design, maxed out for the efficiency, but the, the unfortunate problem is that it, it, it's not good enough for, uh, you know, it's not good enough for now. It's, it's a lack of maintenance. It's a lack of upgrades, okay? You need infrastructure upgrades. Infrastructure upgrades are good. It's good for the economy. It's a job machine, okay? It's good because it makes things more safe. A lot of the issues that we experience in the United States of America are a consequence of our infrastructure never being fucking updated. That's why I always say we are resting on the laurels of the New Deal. New Deal era infrastructure is what America is still running on, okay? And that shit is not going to fucking work with technological improvements, with, with logistics changing dramatically, okay? <laughs> That's the problem. You can... You can have the same skeleton. In some instances, you need to improve that as well, especially with, like, you know, car travel changing as well, especially with, like, the, um, you know, how much more traffic is on the bridge, for example, at any given moment. You might need to even change the bridge itself. However, 
in many instances, even if you don't change the bridge, you at least have to maintain it and you at least have to add additional safety measures around the fucking bridge. But we don't do that because that's gay and lame and woke and, and fucking Marxist, I guess. And, uh, you know, the reality is that uh, we can't do that. Honestly, we just we shouldn't do that. We mustn't do that. The power lines around the bridge had fenders, but the main bridge didn't. What's crazy is you can see the power lines going across the harbor have fenders around them. Thought that after the Sunshine Skyway collapsed in 1980 that all bridges and major ports would have this protection. That's a wild photo. Almost gives the impression that they came, care more about the two-mile stretch of power lines than a bridge that is crossed by tens of millions of people each year. Power lines were likely new construction under stricture regs for fender design criteria. Any new or retrofit substructure repairs on that bridge would require the installation of new fenders since it's a federally navigable waterway. Cargo ship that hit Baltimore Bridge was involved in the Antwerp collision in 2016. So notice how, look, I didn't know enough about this. I read a little bit about it, but you don't need to know too much to recognize that like, here are the most likely scenarios. It's probably the, the, uh, the ship company refusing to do the regular safety checks that they had to implement. Okay, and cutting fucking corners. It's the ship company slamming the ships, as many of these, uh, uh, as many of these companies do nowadays, like stacking it. Okay, it's also a lack of infrastructural safety measures that you normally would have to implement as by law, right? Because it's like an old ass fucking, uh, it's an old ass bridge, so they never did it, and all of that fucking stacks up all of those problems stack up and you create a fucking powder keg you create a powder keg hassan been three days in australia already getting big uh, the only thing getting big is my dick in your mother's pussy okay suck my cock dumb fuck anyway your dick can get big in my pussy okay dude chill chill everybody i thought you just meant you had a tan no he said big are well, you saying fat anyway um, let's finish the, the, uh, let's, let's keep going through the right wing, uh, mysteries. The ship that struck the FSK bridge mysteriously lost electrical power. NATO dreams about collapsing the Crimean bridge. Did Russia just demonstrate its capability to bring down a bridge without explosions? Was the ship disabled by a directed energy weapon? Awesome. Breaking. A ship just collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, causing it to collapse with multiple motorists reported missing. Maybe instead of sending billions to Ukraine, we should be send, spending it on our... Okay, this one is not that bad, though. Like, I don't know why the guy... I know it's CJ Pearson, who's like a fucking right-wing shithead, but, like, this argument is not wrong, okay? Yes, we absolutely... And it's not just Ukraine. We absolutely should be spending money on our infrastructure instead of spending it on war. So I don't know why he, in a sea of good takes... He chose the one fucking Republican who is like accidentally arriving at a good take here. Okay. Just saying. This is a big fucking ship. You don't fund your way out of this collapse. Hassan, come on. Wait, what do you mean? We just talked about fucking fenders for like the past hour, man. What do you mean? No, there are safety measures that you have literally implemented in that same photo. You, we just looked at it. The, the photo itself perfectly demonstrated this photo right here perfectly demonstrates the problem. Newer infrastructure that was built with power lines literally have these things around them. Do you see these things? Okay. Do you know what those things are? Those things are basically the same things that separate you from vehicular manslaughter when you're walking on fucking, when you're walking in like, you know, uh, crowded areas, okay? You got bumpers. Why did they put bumpers on there? The ship is big as fuck, and it's still, for the record, the ship is big as fuck, and it still probably could have pushed through those bumpers anyway because it's not just, it's not, like I said, it is not just the bumpers. It's not one thing. It is the entire thing coming together and perfectly creating this chaotic situation do you understand what i'm saying because any kind of safety measure in that situation is not a guarantee that will stop the ship in its entirety look how big that fucking ship is right the point is the point is it's supposed to relieve some of the tension so the fucking 
the, 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 the foundation isn't eating the brunt of the force, and therefore it doesn't collapse in its entirety. Redundancies and risk mitigation is not done to 100% solve the problem, okay? Sometimes taking away 70% of the force plays a significant role in avoiding further casualties. Shatters are like, how come this really thin bridge couldn't stop this unstoppable force, 120K tons of steel? It's just, it just sucks, man. It just sucks across the board. Like, because when all, all things considered, all things considered, look, I'm not a fucking maritime expert at all. I'm not a fucking engineer, but I'm a normal dude. And when I see a ship that fucking big, okay, go into what looks like, like melted cheese, basically, uh, in comparison to that fucking fat ass ship, I think, I don't know if any amount of fenders would have actually stopped the brunt of this impact. It could have still actually completely collapsed the bridge, even if it did have the safety measures. Because it's not just one problem here. It's a collection. It is a, it is a multitude of problems getting together and creating the perfect issue. Okay. And I, I need to explain, like, that is something that I'm trying to describe here, which is that, like, that ship getting that fucking slammed with cargo being that heavy is already an issue. Okay? The ship, the ship manufacturer, or not the ship manufacturer, but the ship company, the shipping company refusing to implement safety measures after whistleblowers or after people uh, uh, criticizing uh, some of the safety measures, that's an issue. It's a collection of all of these problems that creates this, that creates the catastrophe. Okay. I'm a civil engineer. No bumpers would have stopped that shit. Please. I feel like I'm losing a bit of hearing in that nonsense area. Please don't give into it. No, it's, oh, I was about, I almost <laughs> slapped you in the face. I was going to come up to hug you. All right. Uh. Okay, I'm a civil engineer. No bumpers would have stopped that shit, please. I feel like I'm losing a bit of hearing in that analysis area. Please don't give into it. No, I'm. It's it's not just about. It's not just about the fenders. It is not just about like one aspect. My point is, it is literally all of it combined. And even then, okay, even then. And I kept mentioning this from the jump. Shit still happens sometimes. Okay. Do you get it? Like, my point is, even if we had all the safety measures, even if the ship wasn't fucking completely slammed, even if the ship wasn't as heavy, even if they had listened to all of the safety concerns put forward by uh, the people that are working at the company, and they actually implemented all the safety measures so the power never ran out, okay? Sometimes shit happens. Like, I'm not, I'm not discounting that at all. This is one of those circumstances where, like, I don't think it's a deliberate by design, like, uh, you know, thing that was, uh, that was put forward. It's not a conspiracy at all. Unless a conspiracy is capitalism, which is a contributing factor to the likelihood of these kinds of incidents occurring. Okay? I did talk about the, uh, the, the I think, the uh, safety regulations that could have been implemented on the infrastructural side a little too much. Now we're going to get into the other side. Now we're going to talk about the ship side of things in a second. Huh. Shipping giant Maris confirmed that the Dolly ship operated and managed by Synergy Marine Group collided with the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Um, Synergy Marine Group promotes DEI in their company that anti-white business practices caused the disaster. Funding for Iran. Let's take the money needed for the new Baltimore Bridge from all the dollars we're sending to Iran, period. Let's go. And then last but not least, and of course this was going to happen, this was a given, 
the wide open border. What is this? Polygon primitive. Since people are continuously missing the point, here's a pretty picture that illustrates the concept. Specific acts. E.g. crew actions for getting a checklist item. Supervision. E.g. pairing two inexperienced pilots together. Preconditions. Fatigue or a noisy radio channel with frequent interruptions. Organizational influences. E.g. airline culture that places a great value on time departure, thereby creating subtle pressure to get through checklists quickly. This is so funny because what you're describing is only one aspect because this exists in every other field as well, in every other side of the conversation. You're using this example. You're using this example for, for, um, in, in, as the, to describe the principle, basically, and how uh, you know, there are holes in every fucking perfectly designed structure. And it's pretty, and it's pretty funny because like, it's ironic because this, this makes up for one component um, but the same principle exists for the entire design. All the bullshit about DEI makes me so upset because it involves often medicine. I'm in med school. My peers who are POC teach me so fucking much. They didn't get the memo that if you're black, you just pass automatically in general. Yeah. Well, that's just racism. Anyway. This is why there's so much need for redundancy and it is incredibly, utterly inefficient and I, I, and I think it's great that it's inefficient. It's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be efficient. It's not supposed to be profit-seeking. Like, I, I, value, I value safety and, and uh, human beings and their experiences and, and their lives and their livelihoods in, infinitely more than I value profit margins. Uh, and uh, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm woke that way. I guess I'm woke that way. You've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. Well, bro, wide open borders. We're talking about international commercial shipping, dude. What the fuck? What do you mean wide open borders? We are talking about international shipping. What the fuck are you saying right now? We, in Baltimore, too. Like, what the fuck? Are, oh, my God. It's literally the same exact argument as, like, going to the airport and being like, look at all the fucking migrants here. Why are there so many goddamn foreigners in my motherfucking international airport? I'm like, dude, that, what are you saying? What is the word that is coming out of your mouth? Do you think that it's, like, undocumented Guatemalans that are fucking managing the ship? What the fuck? What do you mean? What, what, how can this tie to the fucking border, please? We all have to stand together. We all have to say that, that it takes 60 votes to pass anything in the Senate. And so Republicans have to stand together and say, look, we're not going to do anything else unless we secure the border. You've been talking a lot about the potential. DEI mayor guy exposed. This guy's getting a lot of traction today for calling the black mayor of Baltimore DEI mayor. And I have to inform you that he's a straight up Holocaust denier. Yeah, I mean, of course he is. He's a out and about Nazi. I remember him. Um, that's not surprising at all. Of course they're like that. Uh, oh, so we decided for the Diddy Ray. We decided for the Russian massacre. What dream level are we in now? Oh my God, this guy's hallucinating. I love that we have to deal with people who are hallucinating on a regular fucking basis. Nowadays, everything is just like you are dealing with people who are hallucinating. All right, let's see what this guy had to say. I got to go pee real quick. Did a cargo ship intentionally crash into the key bridge in Baltimore and how is disinformation spreading because of it? Uh, sorry for the background. I'm in Tampa right now. Um, well, you know why I'm here. Let's get started. On March 26th at around 1.30 a.m., a container ship crashed into the key bridge in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the bridge that carries I-695. The bridge collapsed, a few cars were on the bridge, they went into the water, and the divers are still looking for people. Video was released of the incident. But this video isn't about the incident. It's about the words, time latch footage of the Baltimore Bridge incident. Notice how the ship at 11 seconds abruptly changes course to slam into the bridge. Now, if you actually watch the time lapse video, it seems like the ship loses power right around seven seconds into the video. Now. I'm really not up on maritime stuff. Go watch Sal uh, from what's going on with shipping for that. But if all the lights go out on a ship, you might assume that ship has lost power. If that ship is out of power, I would assume it's probably lost maneuvering capabilities. I mean, maybe there's backups, but 
if a ship loses power seconds before a crash, in the intelligence community, this is what we call a clue. Now, I noticed that many of the tweets about this event had the same exact text. Time-lapse footage of the Baltimore Bridge accident. Notice how the ship at 11 sec seconds <coughs> abruptly changes courses slowly <coughs> to the bridge. I also noticed that a lot of the accounts using this text seem to have Indian names. And I think... This guy called you an unqualified commie when he talked to Mr. Borelli. I don't know who the fuck this guy is, and I love him. I love him already. He's this guy is is great. So great. Uh no, it's just it was it's messed up Hassan. Said he heard about the bridge yesterday while recording and he didn't warn anyone. Yeah, it's true. I, I am in Australia, so I did see it ahead of time before anyone else did, and and I didn't even let everybody know to not go on the bridge. I'm sorry. He's a massive Zionist OSINT guy. Yeah. That's uh not shocking to me. I think I figured out why, but I'm going to get to that. So I loaded the phrase at 11 seconds, abruptly changed course into Cyabra, which. <sighs> I can't watch a fucking dude, uh, like hallucinate like this, man. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it here. Uh, this is the Nazi guy. He said the Baltimore mayor is black and therefore this is DEI. And that is the reason why a, uh, you know, an international ship uh, crashed into the bridge in Baltimore um, after losing power. Very suspicious. Imagine being married to an OSINT guy. You don't really have to imagine that alternative because, like, I don't think those guys are married. I don't think they ever actually get married. I don't think you can, like, maintain a relationship with an OSINT guy, like a sexual relationship with an OSINT guy. It's just, like, you become an OSINT guy because you are you know, not fuckable. And the less fuckable you are, the more OSINT you become, I think. Unless, yeah, OSINT guys with Asian wives. Okay, true. That guy is married and I don't even know how. I don't believe that. I think it's made up. Except for Jero uh, Geo Rainbolt. Geo Rainbolt is not an OSINT guy. Why would you say that? That's like saying MHUD is an OSINT guy. That's insane. Um, what's OSINT? OSINT is open source intelligence. OSINT poses insufferable bastards. I am that or no, MHUD is not an OSINT guy. That's crazy. He's just an insufferable bastard without being an OSINT guy. Um, there are good OSINT guys. Obviously I have Elint News in here. I talk to him a lot. Uh, obviously I talk to Evan Hill, uh, who's also great. But Evan, I think, is not an OSINT guy at that point. He's literally, I mean, Eric Toller is good. There are some good ones. But those guys literally get hired by, like, actual outlets. And also, you have to remember, oh, by the way, speaking of which, um, uh, MHUD did get uh, partnered on Twitch. My goat. Congratulations. Uh, everyone, this is a unthinkable a tragedy. Uh, we have to... Uh, First and foremost, pray for all of those who are impacted, uh, those families. I uh, pray for our first responders and thank them, uh, all of them working together, uh, city, state, local, to make sure that we, uh, everyone. Yeah, it's like, it's definitely this guy who wasn't even fucking alive when the bridge was built, who is responsible for this, um, for the, for the disaster. Seeing an abject tragedy with an as yet unexplained cause, how can I make this racist? If the Titanic cry <gasps> Oh my god, Juniper said the same joke that I've been making. Wait, I think I literally did I say this on stream? I literally said this exact same joke. I was like, bro. I said the exact same joke about the Titanic. I was like, fucking DEI, man. That's why it happened. We copied her is what I would say if that account was Juniper, but she is not. So who knows? But I think that anonymous accounts uh, pronouns are she, her. I don't know who she is or what is going on there. It seems like an unknown individual on Twitter. 
Twitter used to be a place to go for breaking news about things like the Baltimore Bridge disaster. Under Elon Musk, it has become the place to go for brand new unhinged conspiracy theories about how diversity made a bridge collapse. <laughs> I've been learning on what happened to your friend slash friendly Jordy's is insane. Yes, it is insane. Ocean people are the ones who watch Reddit investigators accidentally frame someone for the Boston Marathon bombing and thought that was awesome. Yes. Exactly. Did you already see this? Is literally just black equals bad. Let's meet the commissioners for the Port of Baltimore starting with Karen uh, Corinthia, a barber. She knows nothing about ports, but she's a diversity, equity, and inclusion belonging auditor and consultant. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm losing my fucking mind. Diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives are oftentimes simply just marketing. It is to make the company look more presentable and more marketable. If you think that this has a tangible impact on the actual direction of society or the actual direction of the company at all in a meaningful capacity, you are either A, a liberal who looks at that and goes, ooh, this is sick, or B, a fucking dumbass racist. That's it. It all comes down to do you think black people have the capacity to work in positions of power or do you think they are inferior beings? That's literally it, okay? And liberals look at that and go, no, that's great. Like, it's awesome, wonderful. They are right to say, it's awesome, it's wonderful, there's black people in, in positions of power, that's great, okay? Conservatives look at that and go, no dog, I'm a racist ass motherfucker and I think that that is fucked up. <laughs> that's fucked up as hell. <laughs> as a trans woman, I hate DEI because I don't wanna have to be a manager. No, you will manage this corporation and you will like it. <laughs> <laughs> we should take this opportunity um, <laughs> We should be grateful for this opportunity to put the test that Elon's argument that DEI is bad by reading all the evidence in Twitter replies. Yeah, exactly. Elon was so right, dude. The evidence has been presented by this guy who also seems to think that, um, you know, the Holocaust, uh, uh, one, did not actually, or I guess he is not a Holocaust denier, but more so like he said the Holocaust is good and that uh, we fought the wrong guys. Uh, you know, he's just an out and about, oh, oh, six million e gorillion. Wonderful. He literally is hitting both of those notes. The Holocaust, he's saying the Holocaust didn't happen, but if it did, it was good. And we should have done more of it actually. And we, as America fought the wrong guys. <laughs> yeah. Classic. My favorite type of Nazi, the guy who says the Holocaust didn't happen. But if it did happen, we should do more of it. And it was good. Type DEI into Twitter search and bar and click people and look at what comes up first. It genuinely made my draw, jaw drop. Fuck Elon. Wait, hold on. Let me just like look up. I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't know if I can hit like the search bar on Twitter. You know what I mean? I'm like scared of what it might show. Like, I actually don't know what it's going to. Here, I'm going to go full cam because... <laughs> I don't like typing anything into Twitter. Okay. Here. I don't like typing anything into Twitter and because there's so much porn pussy in the bio shit happening. But yeah, the top shit that comes up for me when I typed in DEI as a search query, it doesn't seem to be porn, luckily. DEI is basically just a stand-in for the N-word now from Philip Lewis. Click people. The fuck? Kamala Harris. So these are the people I follow. And then after the people I follow, the first one that comes in that I don't follow is Kamala Harris. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I get it. It's a, I think it's like a meme. Maybe I don't fucking know. It doesn't matter. This is irrelevant. Yes. Elon is racist. Um, Ryan Grimm, let me preface this by declaring my total ignorance about what specifically is going on on right-wing Twitter. No idea the proximal trigger for the latest meltdown. But I do have one general observation. You drove all the libs off of Twitter and rejoiced. For now, for now, there were no libs. You welcome back the Pepe frogs and rejoice. For now, there were bountiful frogs. Yet the next morning you wept, for there were no liberals to own. Alas, for you had recreated Truth Social, but with more bots... And so there was nothing left to do but call each other pedos and cancel each other. That's my guess. 
Yeah, he's not wrong. There is some truth to this. I think there is some very real truth to this that, like, a lot of liberals were like, fuck this shit. I mean, dude, I am a Twitter power user. I'm literally one of the most Twitter using people out there. I used it for my job. I still use it for my job. And I took it off my fucking phone because it became unbearable to see the metric ton of unfiltered stupidity and racism that, that was being elevated as though it was the greatest take of all time. Like, it, it, it blew my mind. I was like, I can't deal with this anymore. I don't want to see it, like, all the time. It's hurting my fucking brain. I don't want to see it. It's, it's genuinely, like, it's like mainlining fucking 4chan, 8chan, and, like, Kiwi Farms together. It just sucks. It sucks dick. Twitter is still the best platform for NBA injury updates. Yeah, I'm sure there's still pockets. I'm sure there are still pockets of Twitter that still exist, that is good, that is decent, whatever. Okay? But I'm going to be honest, the internet was always like that. No, dude. No. No. It definitely wasn't this bad. It has gotten significantly, noticeably worse. And I say this as someone whose politics didn't change over the course of the past couple of years. My politics have remained the same. My experience on Twitter, on the other hand, like I'm still the same guy. My experience on Twitter, so much worse, okay? Like you must not have been on Twitter. Like Twitter always had a lot of issues. Every social media platform does. Every social media platform has a litany of problems because ultimately it's user error to a certain degree. And we got a lot of fucking dumbasses in the United States of America in general, okay? A lot of fucking arrogant, stupid, dumbasses who think like, no, my opinion is very, very important. Fuck you. Okay? It's important. I came up with it. I'm an American. I am rare. I am unique. I am beautiful. And by virtue of me coming up with this opinion, you have to listen to it uh, because guess what? Me, 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 me. Problem is, problem is, God damn, the birds are going crazy right now. I'm hearing like crazy ass birds. And, and that, that created a litany of problems regardless. But now it's like you get special access if you are like the dumbest person. You get elevated. You get elevated. Your, your posts get promoted if you're stupid enough to buy, fucking uh, buy a blue check mark. And then that creates this thing where it's like, well, the really dumb takes are getting elevated. I'm a, I'm a big dumb ass too. Show you, I just showed a video of you go back, a, a boat crashed here, but you can see dynamite being let off at every single point. I'm going to do it again. So you have here, 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 charges, boom. On the copy before that you can clearly see it happened six or seven times. I went right down the line showing each and every fire point. But my point to this video is let's not get distracted. Ignore the fact that he's a crazy Zionist OSINT guy. He's got access to very expensive tools to analyze behavior, and he's bang on about this. It's worth watching. Are you talking about the other guy? Didn't he just start off by saying it's not a fucking accident? What are you talking about? This dude is already talking about the misinformation around this. Please check it out. It's important. Oh, you're saying that, like... No, he's saying that the... Did a no, this guy's video, he's saying that the misinformation is coming from bots. Yeah, listen, listen up, big dog. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? I'm sure there are a lot of bots pushing narratives, okay? I, I just got to let you know, there are a lot of fucking real people who believe the bots, okay? Don't you have to leave? Not yet. It's only 930. I have to, I'll probably stop. I mean, let me think. I'll probably stop streaming in like an hour. I'm not going to say the time, but I'll probably stop streaming in like an hour. Are the boys not going with you? Um, no, Alex is actually uh, going on a, on a trip on vacation. I don't know if he said where, so I'm not going to mention it, but uh, Alexa is coming with me. I saw 20K likes and 100 plus comments on a racist comment that was made by a bot on IG. <laughs> okay, a lot of people do know where he's going. 
He said Tokyo. Yes, he's going to the Japans. He's going to the Japans. He's going to demonstrate white boy swag go in the Japans. I haven't watched the latest fucking Shogun episode because I've been like too busy out here. Um, will you stream after you land in Melbourne? No, not today. Why would I stream again today? I already streamed today. Um, no, I'm not going to stream in Melbourne today, but I will stream in Melbourne, Melbourne tomorrow. Lots of Sekisu in the new ep. Oh, let's go. Lady Mariko, I hope. Oh my God, no spoilers. No spoilers! He says the line. He says the Japans in the new episode. Are you going to come to Kiwiland? No. Dude, I feel like New Zealand is also more, even more watered down uh, version of Australia. And Australia is already watered down enough as is. You know what I mean? Okay, I'm unsubbing. No, New Zealand is like, from what I understand, everything that's like really cool about Australia that you like, New Zealand also has, and maybe in some instances even better, right? But everything cool about Australia, I don't like. I'm not a nature guy at all. Like, no disrespect at all. But it's like, from what I understand, New Zealand is literally just like, more nature Australia. That's why I said it's watered down Australia as in like less developing, uh, less, less infrastructure and less development Australia. So it's even more fucking nature. New Zealand is the Canada of Australia. Exactly. New Zealand is just for hikers. There's fuck all to do but walk here. Shade for New Zealand. You'll piss off the Aussies too. We stick up for each other. Be careful. Yeah, what? Are, okay, dude. You guys got owned by the fucking... Emus, okay? Give me a break. Does that not make sense? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, Australia is, like, really sick for nature. If you like hiking, if you like all the, like, nature stuff, if you like diving, you're going to love it. New Zealand is even better on that front, from what I understand. It's even, like, fucking more pretty, more nature, more all of that, right? I'm not a fucking hike guy. I'm not a nature guy. I'm a city guy. I like... Big developed metropolitan cities. That's why I want to go to fucking China really bad. You know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> New Zealand in, is going in the opposite direction of like what my interests are, if that makes sense. Like, I want more city, less nature. Me going to New Zealand from Australia would be like the exact opposite of what I'm looking for. New Zealand doesn't have poisonous things though. I, this is true. You, they will do the haka for you if you visit New Zealand. <laughs> Yeah, New Zealand is like, um, New Zealand is very, New Zealand is, uh, Australia's Canada is such a good take. Because like, as far as I understand, they at least had like some treaties with the indigenous populations as opposed to Australia, which was like, no, we're going to wipe out everybody. Uh, whereas like New Zealand was like, we're not going to wipe out everybody. And then they also have like, um, I mean, it's still obviously, you know, you can't do a little bit of fucking colonialization without wiping out some of the people, you know what I mean? But it's like, but there is a little bit of that still. Kiwis and Canadians catching strays. The most British looking kid from the Chinese snack shop is in the front row. Oh my God. <clears throat> yeah. New Zealand are, from what I understand, they're more sorry about it. They have a treaty. They have like a, like a group that goes and, and talks to the, to the indigenous population, like to the, to the natives as well. Like they have like, what is it called? Um, it, there's a term for it. Uh, oh yeah. The Waitangi, uh, tribunal, right? That's what it is, right? New Zealand panders. Australia says gets fu get fucked. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a, there's like a tribunal, I think, uh, of like representatives that come in and they talk to the, to the tribes and stuff like that. New Zealand is much better about that as a Canadian. I say this I, though. Canada has made some really good steps the last couple of years. Our current government is very right-wing, wants to rework the treaty to not mention race. Anyway, Melbourne has some sick trams. You'll love it. Yeah, I, I heard. Anyway, Melbourne has a cool cult. Wait, uh, I heard Melbourne is like very hipster, so it'll, it'll be fun, I think. I don't know. Australia is basically hot Canada. Australia is very sexy. 
Dude, yesterday, can I just say, um, I don't know if we have any clips from yesterday's stream. I don't know if you guys watched or not, but when, when I went to the fucking beach yesterday, I was in awe, okay? It is fucking insane. Like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or nothing. I'm not trying to be creepy, but it is shocking how fucking sexy the average Australian is. It fucking freaks me out. It is weird, bro. It is weird. I've never been to a beach where I'm like, why is everyone a model? Like, what the fuck was happening here? All the men, all the women, everyone was hot as shit. It was so fucking weird. What is this? Were you the shortest guy there? No, no. I mean, I'm still, still pretty stacked up, okay? But it's just, like, crazy. It's the criminal DNA. Aren't you from Los Angeles, though? Yeah, but Los Angeles is still in America, and Americans are just, like, not very hot in general and not very fit in general. Um, don't get duped by the snow bunnies, black queens forever, snow bunnies never. <laughs> Does this ruin your theory about only hot Aussies being allowed to travel? I mean, I think... I think that there are probably people out there... Also, I think... Dude, I was, I, I literally was like a fucking fish. Like I felt like a fish. That shit was crazy. That thing was so tight on me. It was crazy. My favorite moment from yesterday, flexing on her ass as soon as she talks about the buff kangaroo. We had like one called Bruce and he was bigger than me and he was like on steroids. Like he was huge. I was scared of him, but he was really sweet. Him and the other kangaroo, the big male. Um, I wasn't flexing on her. I was noticing how fucking hot it was. And I was like, I might as well just like get a little bit of tan. So I was really trying to pull my fucking sleeves up so I can get like... A little bit more sunlight on my pasty ass arms, dude. It was Bruce and... You guys are so dumb. You literally think, like, every interaction I have uh, with a woman is, like, me trying to fuck them or something. Like, I was not even, you know, that was not the case at all. I was not trying to, like, riz her up. <laughs> I've forgotten the other name, but they used to spoon each other. Oh, that's yeah, they were really cute. Oh, they're gay? Yeah, one day they, they turned... Wait, we like had one... Bro, we were so tired of you for her. You preach to us all the time to be normal. Yeah, you asked a complete stranger yesterday about the turtle penis and echidna pussy. Care to explain? Practice what you preach. Can I just say, I think it's so valid for me to ask, like, the literal animal professional, the literal animal professional, like, how some of these animals fuck. Because it's so weird. Like, what is the logistics of it? You know what I mean? Like, I, it's just, like, very, it's not that you asked about it. It's how vulgar you were. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, I was, I definitely wasn't using like the best language uh, for sure. But like, I, I think that at those questions I was asking were like very valid questions. Like when you see like fucking hedgehogs, they're like, how does this work? You know what I mean? <laughs> she said, Google it. You were talking to her like she's Maya. Yeah. You said the bird had two bad bitches at the same damn time. Yeah. This was my favorite part. A dart or a neck a dart. We taught him wrong as a joke. Oh, we say school shooting um, for like, well, I guess you guys call it like picture day, where you go. Oh my god, the camera was moving so much, dude. That shit was so heavy. Also, let me just say something. When I was there holding the camera, I was rewatching some clips. I did such a good fucking job overall of like maintaining it stable. I think March needs to get his weight up. I realized, like, March needs to get his fucking weight up, dog. Straight up. He fucking, when I rewatch parts where he's holding the camera, is shaking. Skinny ass March. You did because as soon as Alexa got the camera, it was like an earthquake. Yeah, I think people don't understand how heavy this camera is. I'm using it currently. Um, it, you require a lot of grip strength. Like, it, it just, like, it has to be... You have, it's like a constant workout, honestly. But the reason why it's like shaking all over the place is because in the car, it was crazy. It was like impossible to hold on. Go there and they like, they take photos of like the clock. I thought you were making a joke. I no, swear no, no. to God, I get it. I understand what you're saying. 
Like actually picture day, you, yeah, you, yeah, you, so you school 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 In America, when you say that, yeah, yeah, everyone gets very scared uh, because it happens once a week. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it's less frequent here. It's like you get dressed up nice. Yeah, you get, you get, you get, you get haircut yeah. the day before. For this one I can't Do you guys have vaccination days in school? No, but we have penis inspection day. <laughs> That's Actually, awesome. uh, in Ohio. We just have that with PE teachers in our school. Bro, you just need a gimbal, not a gooner grip? Yeah, dude. I know. I know. I just need a gimbal. Except, here's the problem. Gimbal means additional weight. Gimbal means additional battery. Gimbal means additional space in the bag. You're forgetting that, like... I have basically designed all of this entire setup on utility and also on versatility and also speed and efficiency. Which is why I told March, like, we need a different camera. And I think he brought his other camera this time around because I told him, like, we need a, we need a better image stabilizing camera that's, like, I guess not as weighty, not as heavy. Body, body gimbal is way too fucking heavy for Sony mirrorless. That's what I mean. It's just like. It's so funny. It, it is funny, though, like that you guys are talking about like gimbals and stuff like, dude, I've been doing this for years. OK, I know I, I've used gimbals in the past. Yeah, gimbals also need their own case. Uh, gimbals also have counterweights that you have to add on. It's just like a whole process. Um, this is the thing you can use, or you need a, what is this? Uh, cam caddy, scorpion X shoulder support. But the, again, that's hard to fucking carry around. That's hard to lug around. I don't want that. There are mechanical gyroscope chest attachments that offsets the weight of your core. I know, I know, I know, but you have to remember, like, I, I, I want it to be like easy, smooth. I can walk everywhere with it. I can like hide it if I want to. When I put it on a fucking chest strap, you become it becomes a fucking cyborg situation you guys are not understanding the point the problem is this camera is way too heavy and its image stabilizing is not that good uh there are better cameras that are l less heavy that still have high quality imagery that i need something that's lighter and i need something that has better software better image stabilization okay that's it i'm not trying to i want it to be like easy to just like fling around you know what I mean? That's it. I already have an action cam, Chatters. I don't use it anymore because honestly, it's kind of dog shit. The quality is dog shit. <laughs> Wait, the action cams are what? The correct terminology is built-in image stabilization. Yeah. Action cams are obviously the best for image stabilization and also they're lightweight. You can fucking fling them around. You can throw them around. The problem is uh, action cams, their microphones are not as great. We can add a microphone onto this because it's a much better camera. Um, what does Sea Dog use? Sea Dog literally has the most professional. He has moved in the opposite direction of me. I am looking for lightweight. I'm looking for like not a very professional setup. He has created like a very professional setup that requires oftentimes a cameraman. Um, but that's it. Yeah, like Cinemarks is uh, it uses like a super professional camera. And and uh, like a like a like a body mount and stuff to to uh, distribute the weight properly and you know all of that stuff like I don't want to do that. I'm looking for something in between. I'm looking for something in between that is like lightweight enough that isn't uh, you know that's lightweight enough that also simultaneously uh, is is still decent. All right, let's finish this off. I'm gonna go pee again. Holy shit, I'm peeing a lot. Attend this meeting this week. Oh, I don't want to get into that. We've got plenty of time to talk about Ross. You mentioned the port. Uh, the port. Can I ask about cars? About the port. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Ross. Thanks for talking about Thanks for talking about Thanks for talking And the president there addressing the devastating bridge collapse in Baltimore and making news on several fronts. Uh, one saying that the federal government would be there to rebuild this bridge, saying they would move heaven and earth to do that, and that the federal government would pick up the tab for rebuilding that bridge. That's something he said that Congress would have to address. He noted the economic impact, 15,000 jobs uh, impacted here in this area as a result of it. He said, we're sending all the federal resources we need to deal with this massive search and rescue operation that is now underway. He called this a, quote, terrible 
accident, as the officials have ruled out terrorism in this incident. He did say that he would also go to Baltimore. Didn't give a time frame for that, but the president addressing this major incident. Meteorologist Derek Van Dam joins me now. Derek, what does 48 degree water do to a person? Well, frankly, Manu, it's dangerous. Uh, it's very dangerous to be uh, in, included within that type of uh, water temperature, right? So we can see our heart levels rise rapidly. We can start to see our breathing rise rapidly, and uh, we can lose consciousness very quickly. Hypothermia, cold shock sets in. Uh, it is a very dangerous water temperature to uh, be sus succumbed to. And uh, just zooming in a little bit closer, you can see uh, we've got the Chesapeake Bay to my east and the uh, Patepsco River uh, coming out of the Baltimore Harbor here. And this is right where the uh, Key Bridge actually collapsed earlier this morning. So we are going on over 12 hours. So when we talk about human survivability within these types of water temperatures, uh, you can see from this graph 40 to 50 degree temperatures, uh, that human survivability limit is roughly one to three hours before those uh, physiological effects that I talked to you about a moment ago start to set in. Now, complicating the efforts not only below the water, but also at the surface of the water and above for the search and rescue operations that are currently ongoing is this tidal swing that we have right now. This is an exaggerated, we have it a full moon spring tide. So we have coastal flood advisories uh, dotting the Chesapeake Bay, the Delmarva Peninsula, for instance. And you can see this wording here, dangerous rip currents. And uh, this is just compounded by the fact that uh, the Patapsco River is flowing out of the Baltimore Harbor and we've got the Chesapeake Bay and the Atlantic coastal waters flowing out of this region as we approach low tide at 310 this afternoon, Eastern Standard Time. And then we'll see that reversal in the tides as we head towards a high tide peak later this evening. So that could make conditions. All right. Let's talk about Sean P. Diddy Holmes. Yesterday, while we were on our way to the animal sanctuary, the reptile zoo, Sean P. Diddy Combs' homes were raided, both in Star Island in Florida, in Miami, and also in the Homeby Hills neighborhood, which is the most one of the most expensive real estate neighborhoods in the state of California, in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, his homes were raided. His sons were in the Homeby Hills home. They were like handcuffed and stuff. It was crazy. This is, of course, coming on the heels of a sex trafficking investigation into Sean PDD Combs. And uh, we are going to... His sons were just handcuffed. I, I don't think they were arrested, but, like, that's normal. They were, you know... He was not there. He was not at his houses. Apparently, some of the people were tracking his private jet, which may or may not have landed outside of the... Uh, U.S. borders. There are some photos that came out of him potentially pacing around nervously at the Miami private jet terminal right before he allegedly, possibly fled the country and went to Antigua. Let's take a look at the story. News now. tonight, we have some new details about why federal agents may have raided mansions belonging to musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. CNN's Carlos Suarez is outside of his Miami home for us. So what more do you know about what's behind these searches? Well, Anderson, a law enforcement uh, tells my colleague, a law enforcement source rather, tells my colleague uh, Josh Campbell that uh, these uh, search warrant activities at both of Combs' homes are related to an ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Yeah. However, I know. the source would not say not. whether Combs is the target of this investigation. We can, we, we have, um, we have some time for sure. We, I, I can go for, I can go for probably another hour, I think. But at the top of the hour, there I will be serving a three-minute ad break right now. Um, of course, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe chatters for five dollars or free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Hopefully, that's me. Here is the three-minute ad break now. Okay. Um, watch the bridge analysis vid first. No, we're we're moving on from the bridge story. I already covered it extensively up and down. Okay. We're talking about Diddy now. Citing the sensitivity of the investigation itself. 
Now agents with Homeland Security raided two homes belonging to Combs, one here in Miami Beach, the other in Los Angeles. The property here in Miami Beach is an 11,000 square foot property. And uh, late tonight, we saw agents walking out of this house carrying a cardboard box as well as several bags from the second story of the property out here. Now, agents in Los Angeles could be seen walking around Combs's house there. They were processing the scene there and could be seen uh, taking notes on a table there. Now, an official with Homeland uh, Security here in Miami tells me that uh, the raid that took place here happened a little bit after 3 o'clock this afternoon. And a neighbor tells me that about 30 to 40 law enforcement officers uh, showed up to the house out here and carried out this search warrant. Uh, again, Anderson, late word tonight uh, from a law enforcement source who tells my colleague uh, Josh Campbell that these uh, search warrants uh, that were executed is in connection with a sex trafficking investigation. However, the source would not say whether Combs himself is the target of the investigation. And, and has Anderson, Sean Combs commented on the searches? Yeah, so we have reached out to... <laughs> who could it be? It must be a coincidence that they just happened to raid both of his. They just, it, it's a real strange coincidence. They happen to raid both of his homes. You know what I mean? It's just, they're, they're looking for another guy, guys. Okay. Listen, make no mistake. The fact that he's not there and we don't know where the fuck he is also, also shouldn't be confusing or uh, lead to any additional speculation. Who knows, you know? Hey, Sean, come back. We're looking for another guy. Yeah. Two representatives. Wait, what? It wouldn't be a sex trafficking story without the British Royals involved in some way? Court paper names Duke of Sussex as an example of a well-known figure whom the defendants might have had access to. Are you fucking joking? Prince Harry named the Sean Diddy Combs sexual assault lawsuit? Dude! Bro, 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 what the fuck, bro, bro, how, 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 what, oh my god, it's like the royals find themselves mentioned, I mean, in, in some capacity, I'm sure, it's, it's not like a Prince Andrew situation, I'm sure, it's not like that, there's an interview where P. Diddy said Harry and Meghan were never at any parties, uh, of Combs. However, we have not heard back. Again, all of this played out uh, here at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Almost it's clickbait. They're just saying he had clout because he knew him. Oh, that's Immediately, it? we were trying to get some details on exactly uh, what was taking place not only here in Miami and Los Angeles, but as of this late hour, we have not heard from any of Combs' representatives about the raids at either of his properties or the investigation itself. All right, Carlos Suarez, appreciate it. Join me now, CNN legal analyst and criminal defense attorney Joey Jackson and the aforementioned Josh Campbell. So, Josh, you were part of searches like this when you were an FBI agent. What, what do you read into the... I mean, what stands out to you about this? Well, this is all becoming a little clearer, Anderson. You know, from the moment that we first saw those SWAT vehicles roll up uh, to those homes, as well as mobile command posts, all of those vehicles emblazoned with the letters HSI, uh, that was an indication for those in law enforcement that we're likely talking about sex trafficking because HSI itself is uh, the primary investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security. They deal with transnational criminal groups, but they also have a robust under, uh, effort underway to go after human traffickers. That involves two prongs, not only to rescue victims of human tra trafficking, but also to to locate and prosecute those who may be behind the trafficking itself. And again, you know, a source now tells me this is part of an ongoing trafficking <laughs> investigation. Uh, we don't yet know what specifically they were looking for at these residences. We did see on the aerial footage uh, dozens of law enforcement agents that were descending on both of those locations. And so we'll have to wait and see what the search warrant itself actually entailed. But again, this comes after uh, Sean Combs has faced a, a series of legal troubles in the past several months uh, to include one accuser, for example, back in December. This was a, uh, a woman who was uh, 17 years old at the time that she alleged in 2003 that she was sexually assaulted by Combs, saying that uh, she was sex trafficked, that uh, she was subject to gang rape. Of course, Combs himself had denied all of that. And then finally, uh, just last month, a former employee of Combs had alleged uh, in a civil lawsuit uh, that he was forced to uh, work for Combs, forced him to procure and interact with sex workers. And uh, this uh, individual also saying that Sean Combs' son, Justin, was accused 
accused of soliciting prostitutes and underage girls to attend uh, various parties and functions. Again, what? the Combses have denied all of that, but all of this now coming in into focus about what the likely uh, key primary target here is of federal law enforcement. That's determined whether uh, the, the extent of any sex traffic that may have occurred in these residences and who may... There is already many YouTube documentary on Diddy. Yeah, bro. Okay, it's a little bit different uh, when we're talking about like an active Department of Homeland Security investigation into international sex trafficking, potentially, okay? Versus a YouTube documentary from some guy who's like, look at P. Diddy being weird around Justin Bieber. Like, I know that, I know that P. Diddy is like, like a lot of people have talked about P. Diddy, but like, if this goes a little bit beyond the, the T accounts. You know what I mean? And what I mean by that is like, the T accounts might have been correct and might have been there ahead of time before anybody else. But, like, in many instances, they just also, you know, stack it up with a whole bunch of, like, weird shit uh, and, and weird. And it's always, like, almost always, like, reactionary in nature in the way that they fucking talk about, um, like, why these things are happening. Oh, it's the Illuminati. Like, PDD's a part of the Illuminati. And he's doing, like, humiliation rituals, yada, yada, yada. And he's, like, gay. And it's always, almost always homophobic, too. Maybe responsible. So, Joey, Joey, just from a legal standpoint, would Sean Combs' attorneys at this hour now be informed about what exactly they were looking for? Not necessarily. I mean, at some point, certainly you're going to want to, if you're the lawyers, assess, do you have a warrant? Is it valid? What specific information underlies that warrant? Where was the probable cause with respect to, to any type of criminality found, right? Who were the sources of that information? At some point, you'll have all of this. Remember that this is still an active and ongoing investigation. As part of discovery, if this does get into something criminal, I would have to presume the U.S. Attorney's Office is involved. We should point out no right? criminal charges have been filed. Not at all, right? This is simply an investigatory step, and at this stage of the investigation, they apparently went to a judge, right, Anderson, and said, look, we have reason to believe that indicia of criminality may lie within these residences. So they show up with a search warrant at these houses, Correct. and whoever's there has to let them in. Correct. I mean, it's a val if it's a valid warrant, it's, presumably you have all these law enforcement officials there, you let them in, they search for what they search for, and then there's the other step, that other step being what specifically specifically did you find what if any connection is that to any criminality you give it to prosecutors and it's taken from there and are they told what was taken from the house yes there will be a specific list of items that will ultimately is it weird that the dhs is doing these raids instead of the fbi yes it's not weird that the dhs is doing these instead of the fbi it just signals like what the scope of the investigation is um Department of Homeland Security doing it means that it's uh, there's a likelihood that it is like human trafficking or sex trafficking of an international variety. FBI usually does that as well. They they engage in human uh, trafficking uh, cases, but uh, uh, I think like I think they they will do a collaborative one. But FBI is like if it was almost internally, like if it was like domestic, right? FBI can work on. Uh, international cases as well they also do human trafficking and all the other stuff but i think that uh, the dhs participating in the raid or not the D yeah homeland security participating in the raid means that there's an international component probably i think fbi is interstate if it just stays interstate then i don't know if it would be like um uh, it would be homeland security maybe homeland security suggests a massive international criminal enterprise i mean i think so but maybe not. I don't know. You don't know what you're set. You don't know what you're talking about and end up saying, I think. Yes. <clears throat> that is what I'm saying. Yes, I am like literally that's how human language works. Like it, it, we don't know the details. What the fuck do you mean? I'm openly admitting that I do not know the details. Which is why I am saying I think it could be this. You are repeating that I am speculating and saying you're speculating on this issue. It's like, yeah, dumbass, I am. What do you want me to do? They're used to their favorite debate pedophile confidently stating incorrect things as fact. Expect that instead. I just, I don't get it. Like, I'm openly admitting that I do not know. I do not have all of the details. 
I do not have all of the details of this situation. I cannot predict the fucking future. So I am speculating and I'm recognizing that I'm speculating. So when I say my understanding is or what I think is going on, um, you know, I'm, I, that comes with the admission that like, I don't know. It's very odd to, you know, yell at me for not, being confidently incorrect and instead being unconfident and recognizing my limitations. <laughs> I've been only hanging out here since October, but the amount of brain dead you have in the chat is amazing. YouTube perv is mad right now. Yeah, I don't know. Ultimately be turned over to attorneys if, if it goes that far, which will delineate specifically what we took, what room we took it from, who was the agent or agents who, who secured that information. And then it'll go a step further because there'll be analysis on what items that were taken and what, if anything, in that analysis in a laboratory showed that it was connected to any type of sex trafficking, if any, right? And from there, there'll be or there won't be a criminal prosecution. Damn, this guy's good.